Building a brand versus building relationships. Which one is better? Now, as a contractor, should you be using Facebook and Instagram to build brand awareness online or is it simply wasting your time? Hi, my name is Daniel Quindamel. I'm a construction consultant. And today we're going to talk about is branding your business with a website, some business cards and a fancy logo more important than building relationships? Let's find out. Now, a lot of contractors, I see them on my Instagram and my Facebook all the time. They're posting their driveways, they're posting their remodels, their new construction projects. So on the news feeds, they're starting to get like a brand name of like, this is the guy that does luxury. This is the guy that does driveways. As a matter of fact, the guy that did my driveway, my wife found him through an Instagram post that one of her friends had reposted of his work. And she said, oh, I got to call Ray. So that's actually how he got the job. But now I have a question for you. Are you interested in doing small little homeowner jobs like ten, twenty thousand dollar projects? Or are you interested in doing hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar real projects? Now, depending on what your answer is, if you might be interested in doing residential like remodels and stuff. But the reality is in order to grow a real business, you're always going to be hustling. You're always going to be struggling because you're always going to people's houses. You have that whole scenario of the husband and wife work, you know, from home. Uh, oh, I'm not going to give you the final payment until, you know, the little paint dripping is all that stuff. You're going to be dealing with that all the time. Now, what if I told you that there was a way doing the same exact thing of what you're doing, where instead of putting your focus on Facebook and Instagram, what if I showed you that that was a massively better way to get projects? Now, the secret to growing a construction business is building yourself a system of recurring business. What happens is in construction, unfortunately, we can't charge a subscription for our services. But what we can do is we could build a system where we build these relationships with these clients where we're going to get repeat business over and over and over. The problem with doing homeowner jobs is the problem with doing homeowner jobs is that you're going to do one project. You're going to have one set of plans. You're going to have one owner, right? And at the end of the project of your little $20,000 remodel or kitchen or bath, they're going to say, thank you, hand you their check. And that's it. No projects are going to come behind it. Maybe if you get lucky, the sister six months from now needs their driveway done or their cousin needs their kitchen done and they might remember you, uh, but that's not always guaranteed. So now you're basically going to do all this work to get one job out of it. Or they make fun of me at my office because I say or all the time, because usually the or is the better idea. You invest in the types of clients that are going to give you repeat business over and over and over. You invest in the people, in the relationships, in the companies, so you can grow with them, build a reputation. And now you're going to have multiple streams of consistent projects coming in the door. Which one's better? Listen, before I started IM Builders, I was part of a commercial construction company that when I started there, they were basically providing just labor for other companies. And we took that business from almost zero to $7 million a year with six clients, six, six repeat clients that were giving us work over and over and over. Uh, when I did the analysis of the numbers, they were giving us 80% of the business. And then the other 20% were like the one-off jobs from the out of towners, the people that were doing projects here and there one time a year, twice a year, but the guys that gave us work three, four or five times a month. And I'm not talking about little $20,000 projects. I'm talking about hundred thousand dollar projects. 200. The biggest job I did in that company was $500,000. And that was a commercial drywall contractor. So imagine that contract. Now you might be thinking, how do I do it? Let me show you how. So step number one, we're going to use a lead platform or Google to research our prospects. Listen, I'm a big fan of the lead platforms like Dodge or the Blue Book. They're a really, really good source to get your foot in the door to start prospecting. There might be a time that you don't have the funds for it because maybe you're just starting out or maybe money's tight. The other way, which it could be your better way, is to use Google. Now, let me show you exactly how it's done. So this is Google Maps. You're going to go to maps.google.com. And what you're going to do is you're going to come over here. You're going to do your usual Google search to find the types of clients that you're interested in. So for example, if you are a general contractor, your best clients are going to be architects and developers, possibly even realtors, commercial and residential. So if I'm looking for architects, I'm going to put here architects. That's simple. It's not rocket science architects. And guess what's what it's going to do. This is the cool part, right? I don't care about the maps part. What I care about is this right over here on the left. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. So what happens is now it's going to give me all these architecture firms. 
And when I first started using this method, I used to think to myself, man, are there really this many architects? Now what happens is what I care about is not the maps, but I care about what's here on the left. So Google's going to give me a list of all the architecture firms in my area. And what happens is before, before I started using this method, I really thought like, oh, there's probably only like 50 or hundred architects, but man, I was so surprised when you go down the list, you go down and then it refreshes and adds more and more and more. Look, look, loads more and more. And now here's the thing. Imagine if you started investing a couple hours a week, maybe half a day visiting all these people just by sheer probability. Don't you think that you can start building some good relationships here, some networking? Now, I've been talking about using brochures for a long time, but one of my clients recently, he came in, he wanted us to do his estimate for him, but he wanted to, he wanted to meet us face to face. And this is like an old school, older guy. And he's doing it right now. He brings this really nice brochure right over here. And it's like a plastic here. There's a concrete restoration guy, but you can make a brochure just like this pass by all these firms and say, Hey, I was in the area. I wanted to drop this off. I wanted to meet you guys. And this is how you do your prospecting. You can go here and you right here. If you click on it, you're going to start getting all of the information. Here's the address, the website, the phone number, and you can get a virtual assistant to just put all this information on Excel or you can do it yourself. It doesn't take that long. And what the trick is you spend one day or a half a day every single week visiting clients. And if you're on Google, all you have to do is click over here, search this area and it's going to search the area. And guess what? Now in one day, you think I can't hit up these people? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In a day, you could probably hit ten people, maybe. Or maybe you come in here in this little area right here and you spend the day talking to all of these guys and you maximize your time by grouping the people you're going to talk to. Now, that was the Google 100 method. Let me ask you something. How are you doing your prospecting? Let me know in the comments below how you're doing it. Now, step number two, invest in the people, not in the companies. A lot of contractors think that the people that hire them are the companies, but in reality, the guys that are the decision makers, the gatekeepers, they're the project managers, they're the principals of the firms, the owners, the senior PMs. These are the guys that have all the decision power. Let me tell you a story. One time when I was at my first general contractor company, I remember seeing that the estimator finished bidding out the job. They won the project. They handed off the estimating proposals to the project manager and he pulls it up and he says, I'm going to use, no, nah, I don't know any of these guys. I'm going to use my drywall guy. I'm going to use my painter. I'm going to use my electrician. And I was like, man, all these people bid these jobs and the PM decided to use all of his people. Crazy, right? What happens is you want to get your foot in the door. Oftentimes you've got to come in low on price to start the process to get your foot in the door. But what happens is once you get behind the enemy lines, that's when you start talking to the PMs, talking to the superintendents, uh, talking to the senior PMs, go to the job site walkthroughs. A lot of people skip the job site walkthroughs because they're too busy and they, they don't see value in it. If you're a painter, you're not coming in where the existing conditions matter to you. So why should you waste your time to visit the superintendent and the job? You should because it's an opportunity to shake people's hands. And it's also showing how interested you are in the project. Because if you're not even interested to pass by you're treating it like a transaction. So they're going to treat you as a transaction. They're going to want you to be the low bidder, the cheap guy. And the way that you price premium rates is going to be by establishing yourself, by building relationships and by building a reputation within an organization. That's it. Because you come in on price and you build up this network of uh, project managers, estimators. You got to get the, even the janitor to like you because what happens is everybody likes word of mouth, word of mouth. Oh, I've been in business for 30 years. Uh, I get word of mouth. Now, what's better, word of mouth from a little home improvement person or word of mouth from within an organization where they're going to feed you work after work after work after work? We're still using word of mouth. We're still building a brand. We're still building relationships. We're building a brand and a reputation within the organization. So now the question was, is it better to build relationships or a brand? Listen, what you're doing is your brand is I'm an excellent contractor. I'm the best of the best. So ultimately what you're doing as a brand is you're letting the people know your quality and you're letting them know your work ethic, which is going to translate into your relationships and your reputation. Now here's a pro tip. Most of the people that are running 
construction projects now are millennials, just like me, 30 year olds and young 40 year olds. And we're the ones that are running construction projects. The older generation is on their way out. And guess what? There's a statistic that shows that most millennials change jobs about every three to five years. So what happens is a lot of companies, a lot of contractors, they'll invest in the company, but they don't really spend the time to become personal with the people that they're working with. So when those guys leave, they completely lose the connection with the company because they're treating it like a transaction. What if instead of doing that, you invest in the people, you befriend them, you get to know them, you spend a lot of time with them. When that guy leaves to another company, not only are you going to get a new company to work with because they're going to take you with them, you're going to also have your existing connections with the secretary, with that project engineer. And guess what? That project engineer in a few years is not going to become a project manager. That assistant superintendent or that intern is going to become a project manager. That PM is going to become a senior PM one day. So these are the people, if, think about it. Don't think about the now. A lot of contractors are very short-sighted. They think about this project today. They're not thinking about tomorrow. They're thinking about right now. And that's not good. As a contractor, you need to think like an entrepreneur. You got to think in years. You can't think in weeks and months. Now, why do you think about that? If you're getting value from this and you're learning how to prospect, go ahead and subscribe so you can get alerted every time we release another video. Strategy number three, build a brand the right way. Now, I started touching this on point number two. I couldn't help myself. But what happens is in construction, contractors are so bad. They're so, so bad that if you just do like a half decent job in your trade or, or managing a project, they're probably going to call you for the next one. That's like the pro tip here. When we're talking about branding, I want you to be known as whenever you work with someone, whenever you work with a company, whenever you work with even a homeowner, an architect, a developer, you need to be what I call the SEAL Team 6 of contractors. The, the Navy SEALs have their elitist group, which is the SEAL Team 6, where they're the ones that they go into the hardest missions. They are the elite of the SEAL teams. Now, what happens is in construction, when you get an opportunity, a lot of times contractors, they'll bomb it. And then they wonder why they don't get called back for more jobs. You have to knock it out of the park, perform excellent craftsmanship, do above and beyond the call of duty. Don't change order them to death. Obviously, change orders are part of the natural progression of projects, but don't change order them to death. Show up when you say you're going to show up. Answer your phone. Please answer your phone. <laughs> The worst thing that you can do is ghost your client. And that typically happens when you say, oh, I'm going to be there with three guys tomorrow. And then something comes up on another job and now you can't bring them. Now you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't, I didn't bring the guys. Uh, what do I do now? Let me just not answer the phone because the problem will go away. It's not going to happen. They're going to get more pissed and more pissed and more pissed. And it's just going to blow up in your face. It's better to be straightforward, honest, have good character, staff your people, staff the jobs efficiently where you have enough people to do the job, make sure that you don't take too much work essentially be the best of the best of the best because if that's you you're going to start getting a brand of being an amazing contractor and that's when word of mouth starts spreading hey who did your job hey who did your project who did your project and again i'm not talking about spreading between homeowners i'm talking about if you're within an organization let's say an architecture firm let's say your entry point is quality control guy that's the person that you kind of got your foot in the door with let's say you befriend him he brings you in he sells you to their, his PM. Hey, look, talk to Daniel from I am builders. He's super good. Like I recommend them. I think, I think he's going to be a good asset to this project and then knock it out of the park. And guess what's going to happen? That project manager is going to remember, man, Daniel was awesome. I am builders was awesome. They showed up. They, they are, they're ahead of schedule. They actually came in below budget, man. I want to use them again because I'm confident that I, I, if I refer them to the next owner, they're going to be super happy. Likewise, if you're bidding for a general contractor, you might get your foot in the door with an intern with the, with the estimator. It might be an assistant project manager and they're going to sell you to their PM. Hey, look, use Daniel. Uh, they're going to do really good drywall or painting work, you know, try them out. And if you knock it out of the park, every GC wants their go tos of all the trades. Every architect wants their go to residential guy, their go to commercial guy, their go to retail guy. So you want to establish yourself as a preferred contractor by knocking it out of the park every single time. That's how you brand. It's not by pretty pictures on Instagram and Facebook. That's how you brand your business. Now, if you're serious about growing your business and you want to take it to the next level and you want to see massive growth in the next 12 months, I created a training program that is going to show you step by step. Uh, click in the video below so you can check it out how to take your business from where you are today to sell your first or your next million dollars in construction. So go ahead and click the link below so you can check out that video. All right. I look forward to helping you grow your construction business.